Rock veterans Queens of the Stone Age and Josh Homme are back with a brand new album called In Times New Roman which is out on the 16th of June so literally in a month's time. Don't you just love it when bands come back unannounced? I mean we had it with the Foo Fighters just a few weeks ago and I don't know about you guys but I didn't even know that either band was in the studio making music at this point. Tell you what though next month is going to be a great month for new music. Do hit that like button if you're as excited as I am for new Foo Fighters and Queens of the Stone Age music. Okay, so what do we know about the new Queens album? Well, first off, it's their eighth studio album and the follow-up to 2017's Villains, which was produced by Mark Ronson. An unusual choice that saw the band take a sonic left turn to a more snappier and poppier sound. Songs were even edited down to the three to four minute mark and became more groove-based. Although I personally loved that album, for some fans, Villains just lacked the raw aggression and grittier guitars of their previous work. Somewhat six years later, after that album release, the band are back. And on first listen, it looks like the band are going back to their desert rock roots. But more on that later. The album itself is 10 tracks, and just reading down the track listing, it's very reminiscent of the way that bands like Arts and Monkeys title their tracks, in the sense that the band have really had some fun with these album titles. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I love a good pun. You know, I love a good play on words every once in a while. But Queens of the Stone Age have given the word pun an all new meaning here. In Times New Roman, Paper Mache, Machete, Paper Machete, Positive Space, Negative Space, Emotion, Motion Sickness, Emotion Sickness. You get the picture. Really imaginative and I really like the attention to detail here. Now, the album trailer is also quite interesting. The visuals depict some sort of Roman feast and as the music video, this definitely looks like a Liam Lynch production. But yeah, unclear what the overall theme of the album is going to be here, but very excited nonetheless. So, the new single, Motion Sickness. At first, you know, I actually didn't think much of it, but then after a few listens, I've got to say I just love it now. The song is clearly about his recent divorce from his long-term partner, Brody Dow. Or Dale, is it? No idea how you say your last name. Someone can let me know in the comments. Now, I won't go into the details of the split, more out of respect for Josh and his family than anything else, but from what the mainstream media has said, I think it did get a bit messy at some points. All I'll say on this topic is, I hope his family are okay, and his children are okay, and I hope they get through it. Like I said many a time in my previous videos though, the tortured artist often makes the best music. And I think it's fair to say that given the fairly turbulent times that Josh has recently experienced in his personal life, we could be in for a really, really good album here. But anyway, back to the music. First off, I just love the guitar sounds on this new tune, Emotion Sickness. I really feel like they've nailed it on this one. It's a really rare moment for me when I listen to music where the lyrical theme and the instrumental just complement each other perfectly. The theme of the lyrics on this song about feeling somewhat out of sorts with somebody and emotionally or physically sick at your relationship going down the pan. The guitars actually sound pretty nauseating to me, but like in a really good way. I'm not entirely sure how they've managed to get this guitar guitar tone or this guitar sound but it just fits the song perfectly. And then the chorus. The chorus is just so unexpected. The song goes from this sort of super aggressive and sharp edged burst guitar sound to this unbelievably catchy and almost poppy whilst being melancholic at the same time sort of chorus sound and I've just got it stuck in my head. The slide guitar section in the chorus also works so well as well. Production wise it's really well put together, I just love it. Just on the topic of production though, I did notice something about the vocals and the way that they've been processed and mixed on this tune versus Queen's previous work. Just because the way my ears work and making music at home and all that, I kind of tend to gravitate towards the way that the vocals are processed on every song I listen to. I don't know why. But on this one, Josh's vocals just aren't very loud in the mix at all. And they're not super compressed like a modern pop song. You know, when you listen to like Dua Lipa's latest music or Ed Sheeran's latest music, Hell, even Arctic Monkey's latest album for that fact. The vocals kind of tend to sit on top of the mix, on top of the other instrumentation, versus fitting within it. And we saw that on Queens' last album, Villains, with Mark Ronson's production. But here it's kind of old school. Josh's vocals sit sort of in the middle of the noise here, rather than sitting on top of it all, and I actually really like it. Let me know what you guys think. Now, I do just want to touch on the music video, because I think it's just a masterpiece. And I do wonder whether this song was written with some visuals in mind. I had a similar thought when Arts of Monkeys released their Better Be a Mirable. You know, for that song, when you listen to the song and watch the music video at the same time, 
it just kind of makes more sense. The video for Emotion Sickness is another Liam Lynch masterpiece. I think he did Royal Blood's Boilermaker video as well, which was class, I remember watching that. And in a similar vein, this video just has really quirky and frankly quite funny imagery. There's a bit near the end of the video that I'm interpreting as Josh carrying his ex-wife's beheaded head in his hand. I'm personally a fan of dark humour and I do think this is quite a nice touch. And I do just think the whole video has been executed really well. Well done Liam, well done Queens, top song. So the band have announced a warm up tour to go with this new album campaign. And just looking at the tour diary on their website, they're in the UK doing some exceptionally intimate shows, all of which are sold out, by the way. And they're doing these shows in Halifax, Margate and Cardiff. It's almost as though the band have asked themselves, where in the UK do bands never play? Let's go there. I'm all for it though. I'm glad that the band are kind of touring outside of the usual touring circuit and doing some more intimate gigs. Now, another thing I did notice was there is a bit of a gap between their Cardiff show on the 23rd of June and Roskilde Festival on the 28th of June. Could we see a Glastonbury appearance? Cardiff ain't too far from Glastonbury. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, a surprise appearance would be pretty great. So yeah, I am interested to know what the consensus is on this new tune. Leave a comment down below if you fancy it. Let me know your thoughts. I for one am a fan. And with that said, subscribe if you're new. And if you feel like watching some of my other videos, including my reaction to the new Fuse album that's coming out next month as well, I'll leave a link to a couple of videos on screen in a second. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you soon.